Xin chào, what's up everybody? Everybody's been asking me for news updates. Uh, we're still in the middle of the train content, so that'll follow right after this news video. We're gonna go to two days because I'm backlogged on so much content. So every day at 11 a.m. and 11 p.m. Vietnamese time, there will be a new video. Uh, Patreons get early access to everything. I actually uploaded seven early access videos today. So if you want to see stuff ahead of time and be a part of that special crew, jump on over to the Patreon. Also, the podcast for Patreon. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> the Patreon podcast is uh, being filmed tomorrow and will drop uh, tomorrow. So on Friday, the return of the Patreon's only podcast, which is about 30 minutes to an hour of me just talking about whatever I want in a not so censored way. So, yeah, what's the big news right now? Well, there isn't too much really big news. Uh, you know, if you want to subscribe to the channel, that would help me out greatly too. Comment, like, just like whatever makes you happy. Uh, the big news right now is Japan and the Sinopharm, the, the Vero Cell vaccine has killed a, a couple people at a shoe company on a batch that they got. So in that region, they stopped administering the uh, Vero Sinopharm facts, which they should have never got to begin with. Excuse me, I'm drinking a beer. Which they should have never got to uh, never got to begin with. I don't know why they did that. Don't know why they got the Cuba one either. Uh, doesn't make a whole lot of sense, especially since the Cuba one is three injections. I, I don't know. They predominantly use the uh, Sino Farm in uh, like rural areas, the Vero Cell, and in like uh, you know countryside essentially, in smaller cities and stuff like this. Most of the big cities, most of Saigon's AstraZeneca. Pfizer and Moderna. They did use Cinefarm in some areas, but not that much. So we'll see how that plays out. The shoe company is going to pay the, the dead employees a hundred million uh, one-time payment, which is uh, about four thousand USD. And they're considering supporting the kids of the victims that died from the vaccines uh, up until they're 18. I don't know. It's a really big shoe company. It's one of the biggest. They should probably make sure that they uh, take care of the kids till they're 18. You know. <sighs> well, I know why you guys are all tuned in here. International tourism. Nothing's really changed. You know, and the places they keep saying are great and people are happy to go to. Man, they had a whole week of like people getting off the plane and putting uh, flowers over their neck and shit in uh, Phu Quoc, and they can only stay at like one hotel and the people are acting like they're like really glad to be here. On average, the, uh, hello, on average, uh, it's like 4,000 USD per person to do one of these little like sandbox things. Supposedly you're free to go after seven days, meaning you can go anywhere that in Vietnam that you can get to. But it reads like multiple different ways. There's no clear line until somebody's like free of the seven days, which should be pretty pretty soon. And I don't think it's any people are vloggers, so. Um, a few places read it, or a few people have commented that haven't even bought the package saying that they could uh, go anywhere after seven days. The way the article reads that I've read multiple times is that they can go after seven days to any of the approved locations like Natrang, uh, Hoi An, uh, Phu Quoc, stuff like this so I don't know there's in typical Vietnamese uh, government fashion no real real uh, like guideline on it or anything like this so what's going on over here some kind of k-pop shit this looks very k oh we're doing some tick-tocking oh yeah that's tick-tock the way he's doing the camera some trend video this stuff's so weird man have you ever like gone and watched this stuff? I went down the rabbit hole just the other day because I wanted to see like what kids are into right now. And it was like, it's all like these same like three songs, three or five songs and like doing like a, I don't know, 15 second dance thing. And that seems to be like what people like to watch on uh, TikTok. I didn't watch it on TikTok. You can get it on Instagram because they just upload to there as well. But uh, it wasn't uh, very fascinating. It's kind of weird. I'm kind of curious what this is. I'm not going to be a dick and like get up in their filming face. Oh yeah, this is TikTok. 
I don't hear the music though. Oh, they're pretty well done. They got a cute little matching outfits and shit. Oh, they're really into it. They practice this shit a bunch. The chick's like, yeah, good job. <laughs> well, that's cool, man. Like, whatever makes you happy, dancing around a group of friends to go viral. I don't know how that pays. I guess it's like Instagram. You don't to start uh, shilling a product that you don't even use. Respect though, like that's what they want to do. Hello, Zinchao. Hello. <laughs> nice guy. But uh, yeah, the international tourism thing hasn't changed. It's still a, a large package deal where you have to go through a tour group. Got to go with the tour group for seven days. Wow, international scout. I got to say, I've never seen a scout in Vietnam. That's pretty interesting. Scouts make a really good uh, truck, though. I had an international scout in high school. Dana 60 on the rear. A fun little truck. It was a rusted out piece of shit, though. It was a plow truck. Until I come from the Midwest. But, uh... Yeah, the other thing is Japan, like, really wants to do business here. See, like, other vloggers would have just, like, filmed this chick, but I'm not rude like that. She doesn't want me to film her. There's another guy that films on here. He gets like, right up in people's face with his, uh, phone on a gimbal. It's so creepy. You can kind of tell. You can f sense it out when you're walking. be a CBR with a two-cylinder. You can hear it's the two-cylinder. It just doesn't sound that good. That's why I want a four-cylinder sports bike. I don't like that lawnmower sound anymore. But uh, <coughs> they still are trying to push to get Saigon to be part of this tour package thing next month. There's still no official word on it yet. Uh, they still haven't put a guideline out for reopening clubs, bars, and karaoke. Those are the only three things not open now. They say spas aren't open, but every spa is open. So, movie theaters open. Everything's open, but literally a club. Which, who's clubbing anyways? If you go to, uh, oh, we got some Instagramming going on. If you go to, uh, you know, there, there's, no one's trying to go to a club anyways. And if you want to go to a club, you can go clubbing and boiving. They're all open there, except go to. I don't know why go to didn't open, but go to decided to keep the doors closed. Again, for people that want to keep talking about crazy Buffalo. Hello. <laughs> For people that want to keep talking about Crazy Buffalo, Crazy Horse, whatever the fuck it is, it doesn't exist. It's gone. It's a completely vacant building. You can look at any of my Boy Vane videos and see me recording and talking about how it's a blank building. They've gutted it out. It's not crazy anything anymore. It doesn't exist. So stop thinking it does. It's literally painted all white, been completely retrofitted from top to bottom, and is completely empty and vacant. So are all the Monaco's. Like so much of the stuff is closed there. Just Monaco 3 is open. Everybody thinks like one guy uh, has all the uh, big clubs there. It's not the case anymore. There used to be one guy that had them all. Like Miss Saigon, Crazy, Elise, Booze. Like, like literally 10 of them. All the biggest ones that were always open. One guy owned it. He must have started getting rid of them because a lot of those are gone. Elise Booze looks like it's about to go under too. You know. And crazy whatever was never even popular when I've been here two years. Nobody was ever at that thing. Man. Never saw people there. And go to is completely gutted on the inside. And they don't look like they're opening anytime soon. So really what's really open there is uh Miss Saigon, Fa 76, Hair of the Dog, Monaco 3 and a couple of the other ones. Ocean. So, 
But it, 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 it's not that great. There's so little people there. Like, even on like a Saturday night at midnight, there's very minimal people there. Like, and I don't like Vena House anymore. I'm completely over it. So like, I can do very small doses of uh, Boy Ving now. I'm good in like a half hour. I would rather be sitting at a bar that's not playing Vena House at clipping levels and being able to like chat with people instead of listening to the same music over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Everybody's filming today, man. Another guy with a gimbal set up. It's like filming day on Quinn uh, Fue. But yeah, there, there isn't too much change. They want to do a bunch of business with Japan. That has just been taking over the news for like three days now. You know, start a bunch of projects with Japan is like where they're at right now. Japan, Japan, Japan. Let's go check on the talkers. The talk dancers. I'm curious what the talkers are doing. I, I think, you know, I've said this before. I think for normal kind of travel to Vietnam, we're talking middle of next year. I think in January that they'll probably introduce tourism here, but through like a tour package where you have to book it all through a tour group and all this stuff. Like, you know, and I wouldn't be too in a keen in a hurry to get here as a tourist because things are kind of weird still. Like some places are following a curfew here, which doesn't really exist anymore. Other places are not. So, I mean, it, it's weird, you know, they, they they opened everything for two days and then closed down three of the ten other things they opened up, like, you got to understand the government's a little wacky on, like, how they make decisions here. The People's Committee of Saigon it can change at the drop of a dime. You know, tomorrow they could be like, we're opening up, open the thing wide open, and it's open for a week, and then they're like, oh, well. We're going to shut it back down. We, we didn't like those results. Really, the only people that should be viably trying to get here right away are people that have a family here. I, I don't see any other reason to rush to get here. You know. Again, like we can talk about the cases. Lots of people are like, you guys are having a huge flare-up. Well, I mean, not really. You know. Our lowest day of cases in Saigon was like three... 300 and it was for like two days on average our average case is oh, pretty much for the past I don't know three or four months has been 600 to a thousand and yeah after they opened everything up for a month it kind of went back up but like serious deaths has completely stayed down and extreme hospitalization and people that are double jabbed and under the age of 60 is like extremely down the only deaths that are really getting reported and people dying are double jabbed really older people like 60 to 60 on up and those are the same people on like a ventilator and shit right now so like if you're of a normal age and you got vaccinated you're not going to die and you're not going to be on a ventilator which is what it's supposed to do like again I'm not a virologist so like and unless you're a virologist don't come at me so many people that think they're like experts in this shit now we're not like unless we studied this field which we didn't you know we can all read google i know how to read google too but still at the end of the day you know you should be an expert in something before you talk about it but uh yeah that's really where we're at um I think things will stay exactly how they are until after Tet. They're going to try to control Tet. And that's why they kind of don't have, like, all the cities open, you know? Hanoi just dropped the quarantine thing. So now you can go to Hanoi without a seven-day at-home quarantine. You can go to Da Nang, you can go to Da Lat, you can go to Nha Trang, all without quarantine as well. Boom Tao, I think, is still closed. And why would you go to Nha Trang at this point? Oh, they're still talking all over there. Why would you want to go to uh, Nha Trang right now? I don't know. Like, uh, Sapa's open. I mean, Sapa would be cool. We might do Sapa. 
But again, what's going to be open, what's not going to be open, that's my big issue. Like, you know, we saw it in the train. You're going to see more of it in the train. There's so much stuff uh, just not open, you know? What kind of vacation is that? I can understand if you're in like a middle of a winter with snow and you've been locked away with COVID and you want to get out of that. I see a possibility then of, uh, you know, maybe wanting to take a $4,000 vacation to Hoyan. I don't know. I still don't see that. I don't see as Vietnam being a $4,000 vacation destination. And if there's anybody that is uh, booked a trip, can you leave a comment and leave a price and where you're going and what they've told you. If you can go after seven days wherever you want or if you just have to go to like designated areas um, like, like all the other areas they've listed for a bubble. I've been trying to collect that data. Usually one or two people comment on prices looked up. It, it, nothing really lower than 3,800 I've seen. So. Yeah. I mean, as, as far as news goes, that's that's really it, you know. Uh, I still think Saigon's doing pretty good. I don't think Saigon will close back down ever again into an extreme lockdown. They just simply can't afford to. And what I mean by that is, is not these restaurants and shit. Is they're manufacturing. They cannot piss off Nike, LG. They can't piss off all these huge companies that make up a huge part of their GDP. They can't do it again. So... I highly doubt you'll see like a hardcore lockdown again because it affects all that stuff greatly. So, and it doesn't seem like international tourism is really on their like top radar. There's a guy that says it way better than I do. Like his videos floating around on YouTube, some old guy that, you know, speaks way better than I do, but uh, he's, he frames it a lot better than I do. They're, they're, they say stuff, but no one has, has a plan or even like actually is even close to having a plan into effect. So. I think they're wanting to wait till Tet's over. Really, I, I really think they're not gonna open the floodgates too wide till after Tet. That's my opinion, I don't know. I think you'll see a lot of places, Asia-wise, start to open in January. Everybody keeps just like berating the comment section that like Thailand's fully open, you know? One of my best friends is in Bangkok right now. He's been there for like two months almost now. And Dudes, it's not the promised land, I promise you. Like, There's still curfew in most areas. Most places are closing down at like 10 p.m. You know, there's still not like really bars open. You can have a beer out of like a sippy cup, you know. It's not the Bangkok you know. And it's, it's much different. So like, you know, I think he said they pushed back bars opening now officially to like January. So I think it's too soon to go to a lot of these places unless you're like, really pining uh, to go there you know it's not like if you came to Saigon right now it's not gonna be the Saigon you know you're gonna see a lot of closed stuff in a lot of places that need to re-rent out so you know and Saigon does a really weird thing like Vietnam charges more to kind of recoup from their closed loss so like it's not particularly cheap here right now either now I speculate like all these places will go back down in price like as things get more busy again. They're trying to like make a killing off of, uh, off of like uh, short term. Like whoever goes in, like they're trying to really get you to, uh, oh, sale, sale, sale 90 up, up to 90%. Everyone's got crazy sales. Tomorrow's Black Friday. Today is Thanksgiving actually. And you don't even realize, like, I didn't know it was Thanksgiving today until somebody, like, commented, Happy Thanksgiving, and I was like, oh, it's Thanksgiving. I don't have any scale of holidays anymore. You know, we don't celebrate Christmas or uh, Thanksgiving or anything here. So, and to me, not no big deal. Like, I don't, these aren't things that, uh, sure, if I was a kid, cool stuff, but, like, I don't particularly care about that stuff too much anyways now, so. Yeah, and I'm not the guy that wants to eat, like, Guess what? I figured out a life hack when I was in my 20s. You don't have to eat turkey and stuffing at Thanksgiving. You can buy a steak. <laughs> you can eat whatever you want. So, <laughs> and I don't even feel the need to do that. Like, I don't need to go have a fancy steak tonight. We're probably gonna eat like pho or some shit. We've been eating a lot of pho. I really like uh, this chicken pho down here. So, 
Yeah, that's the video. I can't think of anything else more to add. People have been asking me for a news update in a lot of the comments section. Somebody told me VN Express International went for pay. I mean, it's not for pay on the app for me here. Um, and I don't use the international one. I go to Google Chrome and do the VN Express in Vietnamese and just translate to English. It has much more information and does a way better job. So I recommend you do the same. Uh, v VN Express International is kind of terrible. They translate poorly. and They don't translate like 80% of the actual stuff that they write on their regular site. All right, guys, if you have any questions, leave it in the comment section. I think I covered everything that people have been asking. So, yeah. See you on the next one. Stay frosty. Peace out.